everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. I'm Lauren and in this video I wanted to chat to you and give you a little bit of an overview about different dressmaker cup sizes and patterns. Now it's been really great to see recently that more of the independent sewing patterns like the companies that we stock and that are really popular online and blogs and on Instagram are starting to be more inclusive in their size range and offer different cup sizes with their patterns patterns but I know from experience and including some of these patterns in our monthly sewing society kits that quite often people aren't really sure about what the different cup sizes mean and how they can choose what one is best for them because the main sort of headline here is is that the cup sizes on the sewing patterns don't correspond to the cup size that you're going to wear in your bra or that you're going to buy from the shops. A dressmaker's cup size is something different so I want to just explain to you a bit more about that, how to work out what cup size you are in terms of a dressmaker's cup size and just highlight some of the lovely sewing pattern companies that are now offering different cup sizes in their patterns. So first of all why is cup size important? So if you've been making your own clothes using sewing patterns and you find that sometimes clothes are very tight over your bust like over the front of your bust or you're finding that you're making clothes and you feel like they're kind of fitting at the bust okay but they're sort of drowning you at the neckline or maybe they're like really drowning you at the shoulders and you feel like they're too big in that area but that you're having to sort of size up to that size in order that it's not tight over your bust then it might be that the pattern that you're using hasn't been drafted in a cup size that corresponds to the proportions of your body. So it might be that you've realised you need to make a bust adjustment to patterns, that you've been doing full bust adjustments or small bust adjustments to patterns already. But understanding the cup sizes can sometimes eliminate having to do that to patterns and then just mean that you can get a general better fit straight out the packet without having to make as many kind of tweaks and modifications to the pattern. So that's why it's good to know what your cup size is and crucially what the difference is between your high bust and your full bust. Okay, so how do you actually find out what your dressmaker's cup size is? So the first thing that you have to do is take your measurements and you're gonna be taking your high bust measurement. So that's when you put the measuring tape round your back and then you want to bring it up and over the top of your bust there. Make sure you're relaxed. It might be that you want to take a deep breath in and then relax out. Make sure that the tape measure is nice and flat against your body as well. Don't accidentally sort of stretch it out as you look down to see what the measurement is and then make a note of that. Then you want to take your full bust measurement. So again, tape measure round your back and then this time bring the tape measure up and over wherever the fullest part of your bust is. Again, just, you know, just make sure you're relaxed and the tape measure is nice and flat against your body and then make a note of that measurement as well. And then you need to work out the difference between those two measurements. So generally speaking, this is quite a generalisation because there are exceptions to it. If the difference is two inches or less between your high bust and your full bust, then you're going to be in the A to B cup category in terms of dressmakers cup sizes. If it is four inches then you're in the D cup category. So the way that the patterns are created for two different bust sizes that then offer like a range of sizes is that they'll start off as actually two sort of separate patterns that obviously have the same style and design but they'll have been drafted in a different way to accommodate whatever difference there is between the high bust and the full bust. So then those, so pattern companies that offer like two different size ranges in their patterns, one with a B cup, one with a D cup, they'll start off with one sort of kind of main pattern for the B cup and then, the, you know, they'll test that, they'll tweak it, all those sorts of things and then that pattern will get graded up and down accordingly to make whatever size range the pattern company wants and then the same thing will happen for the d cup pattern and then it will grade it get graded sort of up and down accordingly depending on whatever size range the pattern company wants so quite often you then get this kind of overlap 
of sizes in the middle where there's you know there's a certain size range it might be say like you know size 12 to 20 or you know 14 to 22 it kind of varies on the pattern company but there'll be that kind of emergence in the middle where you can actually choose whether you're a b cup or a d cup and and that is all about just knowing the difference between your your high and your high bust and your full bust so some of you might be thinking what do you do if you're between that like what do you do if the difference is three inches between your high bust and your full bust and you think well kind of in between a b cup and a d cup so what one do you choose and a lot of that is going to depend kind of on your personal preference and it might also depend on how close you are like maybe you're only maybe the difference is two and a half inches so you're like quite close to the b cup and maybe the difference is three and a half inches so you're quite close to the d cup difference of, of four inches so then you have to take into consideration other factors like what is the style of the garment or what is the fit or how much ease is in the garment so for example if the garment is something that is designed to be quite loose over the bust and it's you know it's quite a relaxed fit and you know it's quite baggy around the bust then it might be that even though the difference between your high bust and your full bust is a bit more than two inches it might be okay anyway because there's so much ease in the pattern so you have to take that into consideration there's not always going to be like a hard and fast rule so the next thing I wanted to cover is how do you actually read and make sense of the charts and all the tables of numbers that come with sewing patterns because it can be quite overwhelming. You look in your pattern instructions and there's just tables and tables of numbers and figures and you think, oh, I don't even know where to look. So first of all, you have to separate it out. There's going to be tables that relate to body measurements and they are the actual measurements that your body is. And then there's going to be finished garment measurements which are the measurements of the garment when it's finished and when it's stitched up. So first of all, separate those two. You're only going to look at one initially at a time, so you can immediately split it in two. The next thing you need to do is to have a list of what your measurements are, your high bust, your full bust, your waist and your hip, kind of as a minimum. Some other pattern companies might give other measurements for like the bicep, for example, or for the thigh circumference, but as a minimum, high bust, full bust, waist and hip is really going to help you. And then you want to start plotting that on the body measurement chart. And that will help you to sort of hone in on a certain part of the chart that's most relevant to you. Now, the chances are you're going to be not falling into like one direct column of a size. I would probably say the majority of people are, you know, at least one size out and some, you know, direction in one of their body measurements. And that's totally normal. So the next stage after you've done that and you can sort of see like the region of size that you might want to make you know, you've sort of shrunk that table down to just the relevant information for your body measurements. Then you need to look at the corresponding section in the finished garment measurements. So then you want to be looking at the finished garment bust, waist and hip to see how much ease there is. So in patterns, there's going to be three types of ease. There's either going to be positive ease. So the finished garment is bigger than your actual body measurements most common in woven fabrics so that you can get them on and off so that you can move around and stretch and feel comfortable in them so that's positive ease the garment is bigger than your actual body there might be no ease so that means that the finished garment measurements match exactly to the body measurements so you know think that is going to be really fitted you might see something like that in a pattern for say I don't know, say it's like a pair of fitted skinny jeans that are made in a stretch denim, you know, that are supposed to be quite fitted and sculpted to your body. That might have no ease in it, just as an example. Or the third one is negative ease. So that is when the finished garment is actually smaller than your actual body. And this is most commonly seen in garments that are made with stretchy jersey fabric and that is because the fabric that you use to make them is obviously going to stretch around your body and that's what gives the fit and the style and design of the garment. So when you're trying to decide what size to make or what cup size you, you should choose, then looking at those finished garment measurements and working out how much ease is in the pattern will help to guide you on what size to choose. Because say for example, it's just your, you know, you're fitting one size in the size chart for your bust and your waist, and you think, okay, I want to 
make that size but you know my hips are you know a size bigger or two sizes bigger but then you look at the finished garment measurements and you realize the style of the garment you're making is very very loose over the hips and there's going to be lots of ease in that area anyway then it might be you don't actually have to change the pattern at all you could just make the size that fits your bust and your waist and your hips are still going to be comfortable in it because there's lots of positive ease there so that's why it's good to look at both in conjunction with each other especially if you're falling across several sizes because it can just give you more of an indication of what that the size of that finished garment is going to be and how it's going to fit you the other thing that i do want to point out here as well is that what the size is called in the pattern is completely insignificant try not to pay attention to the number that the size is called I think quite often people maybe have a feeling in their head of what size they are and quite often when you come to make a sewing pattern it can be different and that can sway your judgment on what size you want to make because you because in your head you feel like you're 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 a size and then when you look at your body measurements you kind of come up as a different size remember pattern all the different pattern companies will use different ways to label their sizes some use us sizes some use uk sizes which are different again some use european sizes some just use numbers some use extra small to 7x you know they've all got different labels to them and try not to sort of let that kind of worry you or kind of distract you from picking a size it's best to just go on whatever your body measurements are telling you and how they fit into the finished garment measurements on the charts so i've put together a blog post which is on the website and that just summarizes everything that i've said in this video as well and i've also got a little bit of a list of different pattern companies that offer different cup sizes in their ranges it's not an exhaustive list i know i've probably not got everything on there i've tried to sort of focus on the patterns that we sell in the shop anyway and just some of the popular pdf sewing patterns that i kind of see come up a lot on instagram or ones that we've maybe used in sewing society kits before so do check that out but a lot of the more sort of well-known independent sewing pattern companies are starting to introduce different cup sizes into their size ranges and they're kind of working through their back catalog of patterns to have that and i always generally see them advertise that if you've bought at the 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 zero to 18 or like the zero to 20 size range of a pattern but now they've brought out a different size range for that pattern and you feel like that might suit you better they usually always say like just contact us and we'll, we'll you know we'll send you the pdf for free of that so um that's something to sort of look out for as well if you're not a fan of pdfs do remember that we have the a0 pattern printing service so you can order that on the website and you can send your pdf files to us and we print them out for you on our big a0 printer so that's always an option too you don't need to stick everything together at home and cut out lots of a4 sheets there is an easier and quicker way so i hope you found that useful just to clarify what it means and that it helps you get the best use out of the sewing patterns that are out there it does just make it easier in terms of getting a, a, a better fit sort of out the packet really if you've got any questions at all then you can leave them in the comments and i'll try to help you as best i can you can also email the shop as well or call the shop the gng team and i are always happy to try and help as best we can if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video and i'll see you soon bye